Good morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. We are back in the saddle here doing gospel commentaries in the morning with the family. Um, we have been out of commission for a while just because we had spent a good while out of the country uh, vacationing. So, And then we took a little vacation from the vacation after the vacation so now we are uh, back on uh, regular <laughs> regular uh, uh, mode so we're going to start up with our gospel commentaries again and hopefully we're able to do this every day from here on so today is june 27th already 2019 and the gospel for today's mass comes from matthew uh, chapter 7 Verses 21 to 29. Jesus said to his disciples. Okay. Listen up. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Remember that. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Hey, Carl. How are you? Good Hi, evening Carl. in your part of the world. Yeah. You want to say hi to Carl there? Mm -hmm. Everybody say hi to Kuya Carl there. Hi, Kuya Carl. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. Oh, you, you. I'll show you. There you are. There. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, Carl, did you just come back from some kind of a gig today? Oh, but it's a weekday still, right? It's the, Oh, no, it's Friday there. So, okay. Okay. Not yet? Friday here. It's no. Okay. Anyway. What? <laughs> anyway, so let's listen. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So our Lord says, many will say to me on that day. What is that day? The day when we finally face God after our life on earth, right? Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty deeds in your name? Then I will declare to them solemnly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Very harsh words. Right? Very harsh words that our Lord might tell us, as He said He will, to those people who, who are not sincere with living up to their commitments of knowing, loving, and serving God on earth. Okay? What is knowing, loving, and serving God? What are those three things all about? Let's review our catechism questions. One of the first catechism questions that we are uh, asked to memorize. To which the answer is to know, love, and serve God. And to live happily with Him forever in heaven. What is that? Huh? Joe? What? Oh, Jay? Why did God? Huh? Why did God? Why did God make us? In other words, what's the purpose of life? Okay, very good, Jay. Huh? What's the purpose of life? Why are we here on earth for? Right? Why did God make us? The very simple answer that the Catechism provides is that we are here. God made us to know, love, and serve Him. Know, love, and serve Him. And as a consequence of doing those, we will enjoy is everlasting happiness in heaven when we die. But to those people who did not fulfill that, knowing, loving, and serving God genuinely, and yet only took recourse to pretending to be good and goody-goody, okay, goody-goody, okay, goody-goody is not good enough, right? To pretend to be good is not being good. It is to be pretentious. 
It is to try to impress people. It is just to try to uh, attract attention to oneself. Right? That is not serving God. That is not doing the will of God. That is what you call hypocrisy. That is dishonesty. That is pretension. Okay? And then you presume that, oh, because I went to Mass every day. Oh, because I prayed the rosary. Oh, because once in a while I did good things. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll go to heaven. Well, guess what? Look what our Lord is saying here. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You got to make sure that you listen to the word of God and act on them. So two requirements. You listen and then you act. Listen and act. Meaning... The act, of, the, the, the act of listening means that God expects us to, to be open to His will, to be attentive to His will, okay? to obey His will, and carry it out. Put it into action. Do something about it. Okay? So it's not enough to just hear the word of God and say, oh, okay, oh, I heard it, okay. Yeah, 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 I know it. <laughs> but then we don't do anything about it. Well, that's not complete. So we are not, we are not obeying the will of God that way. Eh? Plenty of people know what they're supposed to do. Plenty of people proclaim that they understand what God wants from them. But... The same people who profess that so-called faith in God don't do anything about their faith. They don't go all the way to carry out the consequences of the faith they say they profess. Well, what does our Lord say? Well, that's not complete. That's not the whole story. You cannot just come up to me and say, Lord, 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 I did this for you, Lord. But actually... We're doing things out of their own vanity, out of their own uh, 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 self-interest only. And they were just pleasing themselves rather than serving God genuinely. Right? Okay. Now, but how do we know the, the will of God? How are we ever going to be able to listen and act on the will of God? Where does the will of God come from and how is that communicated to us? Huh? Through the Gospels, yes, very good, Shabby. Chavel says through the Gospels. That's true because the Gospels would be the. What are they? What 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 does the Gospels contain? The Word of God. Very good, Chavel. The Word of God, right? So God communicates to us through His written uh, uh, Word, which is uh, um, which we know through the Gospels. Okay. Uh, how else? Yes, Joe. Through your parents. Through your parents. Very good. Why through your parents, Joe? How do you know the will of God comes through your parents? <laughs> okay. Well, they come through your parents because precisely God created the marvelous uh, institution called the family so that so that that is the the first school of life right that is where we first learn about life and the things of god that is why the parents have the primary duty to educate their children about things related to god and things related to faith right it is not the duty of the parish to educate your children folks uh, it is not the duty of the PSR or Parish School of Religion to educate your children. Uh, and uh, as I have been saying many times over, uh, this PSR thing is a big mistake uh, for parishes to be undertaking. Okay? They put the onus of responsibility uh, to understand the faith on the children rather than on the parents. And at the same time, the parish uh, people they play surrogate uh, roles, right? 
It is not your duty to be educating these children. It is the parents. So rather than have a PSR for children, you should actually have a PSR for parents so that parents learn how to educate their children about the faith and they do it themselves with the support of the parish perhaps, right? But parents have to take on the responsibility because they are the instruments naturally provided by God to educate children especially about faith and morals so those of you parents who are listening to this broadcast this morning please take this into account take this into consideration if you just shove your kids into the PSR uh, classes you are um, uh, uh, um, uh, abjugating on your duty you are you are not fulfilling your um, your role as the primary educators of your children and that is not a good thing. So I would encourage you to learn your faith and be the first teachers of your children as far as faith and morals are concerned. Okay? So very good, Joe. Yeah, you learn the, the will of God through your through your parents. And how else? There in, in the catechism we're also told about yes, Joe? The church. We are told about the church being being uh, the source, right, of and the depository of the will of God for us, right? The magisterium of the church, which is the teaching authority of the church, okay? The church is there as a mother, as a mother who teaches us the word of God and the will of God for each and every one of us. Okay, now, but as our Lord says here, everyone who listens... To those words of mine and acts on them. So let's break this down a little bit. What do you think our Lord means by the word listen? When he says only those who listen. What does that mean for us? How do we actually listen? Obedience. Huh? Obedience. Obedience. Well, before obedience, Joe, something else has to happen. Before we even obey, something else has to happen. What does it mean to listen? Hmm? To listen, meaning there has to have there has to be an active uh, participation on our part to have a way to absorb what God is telling us, right? Huh, yeah. Sophia? Very good. We need humility. Okay? we need the virtue of humility. To have the openness, okay, the openness and willingness to absorb what God is communicating to us. Okay? A person who is not humble will be like a stone wall, right? Nothing will penetrate that person because he is proud, he is cocky, he thinks he knows everything, he thinks he can handle things by himself, right? Those kinds of people cannot understand the will of God and will never understand the will of God until they break down their wall and the barrier that they are building around them and have enough humility to recognize that, well, they're not superhuman and that they need humility to be able to listen to the will of God. And how does God communicate to us? Well, we already said through the church, through our parents, through people around us that God has precisely put there by our side to guide us. Those are the instruments that God has put there in order to help us understand His will for us in our lives. But on top of all that, we have to do our own listening. Not only listening to the people around us, but also listening in prayer. Okay? That is why we also need to pray. We also need to converse with God directly through our personal prayer. And you know this habit that we have now of going to the Blessed Sacrament in the morning before we go to Mass? That is a fantastic time to have that one-on-one -on -one time of prayer with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Okay? That's a very, very good opportunity. The 10 to 15 minutes we have right there is a good opportunity to talk to God about 
ourselves and how we are listening to His will. And there are many other times during the day. You can always segregate a few more minutes of the day to talk to God. And here at home, you have plenty of opportunities to do that. And then, before you conclude the day, we have the examination of conscience. In the examination of conscience that we do at night, we can do exactly the same thing. Talk to God again, one-on-one. -on -one, right? And ask Him, how did we love today? Right? How did we care today? How did we serve today? All of those are questions to help us understand whether that day we actually did the will of God. Don't you notice the pattern of the questions? No, love, and serve. Right? Exactly the same questions we ask in the examination of conscience. How did I love today? How did I serve today? How did I care today? How did I excel today? Eh? All of those are related to the meaning of life. Know, love, and serve God. You see? So, if we love God, we're fulfilling that, that uh, love part in that question of know, love, and serve God. Right? When we, when we serve others, when we care for others, when we excel in everything we do, all throughout the day, then we are serving. We are acting on the will of God. Okay? So the second part here, it says, those who listen to these words of mine and act on them. The acting part is where obedience comes in. Okay? When we obey what we are told, when we obey what we hear, when we put into action the things that we know about God. And about the will of God for us. Okay? So, humility is needed to listen to the will of God and to the instruments of God around us. Then obedience is required for us to act on the will of God. And this is the formula, which is really very simple. Very simple to follow, yet it requires effort. Right? It requires effort. It may be simple to think about, but if we don't put the effort, then it will mean nothing. If we don't put the effort, we will just be like everybody else who said, Lord, 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 but didn't do much about putting these things into action. Therefore, if they didn't do much, eh? listen, eh? if they don't do much, then it will mean nothing to God. Eh? And later on, God is going to tell us, well, yeah, you said Lord, Lord, but, <laughs> you know, how did you really fulfill the will of God? How did you really fulfill my will at the end of the day? Okay, so let's keep this, one, this, this, uh, this um, admonition very much in mind as we begin our day every day and conclude it with the examination of conscience. To examine whether... We actually listened to the will of God and obeyed the will of God that day. Okay, everybody. Have a good day. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.